Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be installing Sorbet Leopard on my PowerBook G4 12 inch, which some of you with a keen eye might have noticed is up there on that shelf. I've already got Sorbet Leopard running on the iMac G5 behind me here, and I believe it does run better than Leopard. But today we're not only going to install it on the PowerBook G4, we're going to run some benchmarks as well so we can see if there actually is a performance improvement. So let's get started, shall we? Here is the PowerBook G4 12 inch, which I'm now starting up. There we go, there's the start of Bong for you. It's currently running 10.5.8 Leopard. And I actually thought there'd be a lot on here that I needed to back up, but there actually isn't at all. We're ready to wipe this thing. As some of you will know, Sorbet Leopard isn't really a guided installer. You don't go through an installation process. You pretty much just restore a disk image onto your hard drive. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna put the PowerBook in target disk mode and via Firewire, I'm gonna restore the Sorbet Leopard image onto here through the iMac G5. Here's my Firewire cable one end into here and the other end goes into the iMac G5. So to start up in target disk mode I'll press the power button and then hold down T after the Apple chime. So this allows the drive from the PowerBook G4 to be read by the iMac G5. I've just turned off my ring light so you can kind of see the Firewire logo bouncing around the screen like kind of one of those classic DVD symbols. <laughs> you might be wondering is this the only way to do the install? Absolutely not. This is just one of the ways. You've got to get creative with this kind of stuff. So if you have two Macs with Firewire ports lying around you can use target disk mode and disk utility to restore the image onto the target machine. If you've only got one machine you can obviously make a USB installer that's a heck of a lot more involved and doesn't always work. What I did on the iMac G5 was create another internal partition and I restored the Sorbet Leopard DMG file onto that. So you've got to get creative. If you're having trouble doing this yourself go onto the forums get some support or alternatively join my discord and I'll see if I can help you come up with something. Now that the PowerBook is in target disk mode we can see the drive appearing on the iMac G5 desktop here so we can go ahead and explore that if we want but what we're going to do is open up disk utility so utilities disk utility and then we're going to find the sorbet leopard image and we're going to restore so i've dragged the sorbet leopard dmg file into the source and the destination is just going to be macintosh ssd and we'll hit erase as well asking for a password oh do you know what guys i completely forgot about this if you've seen my previous video you'll remember this error that i came across in disk utility i ended up doing it with carbon copy clone all right so let's do that shall we it's all coming back now when i tried this installation on the iMac i had a terrible time with disk utility and i cursed it out pretty much that was a bit of a journey so let's launch carbon copy cloner agree source sold by leopard the disk image and the destination obviously macintosh ssd which is the power book uh, template i archive, delete anything that doesn't exist on the source, yeah. This task may delete some files and folders from Macintosh SSD. Yeah, no worries, continue. So that's now copying the Sorbet Leopard image, which is what I downloaded from Macintosh Garden, onto the SSD of the PowerBook G4. I'm not sure how long that's gonna take, but we've been going for a minute and 20 seconds and we've got 120 meg copied, so we'll see how we go with that. So we have a success that took just under 27 minutes and it copied 3.8 gigabytes. Let's try and boot the PowerBook. Okay, so I'm just gonna shut it it down and then I guess we just try and boot up as normal it should be bootable okay that's promising we have an Apple screen and the loading indicator we have a mouse and there we go we've got the custom Sorbet Leopard wallpaper we can unplug the Firewire cable and there we go Sorbet Leopard is now installed as you may have seen in the previous video Sorbet Leopard comes with these tips and tricks documents which I'm going to put in my documents folder I've currently got a similar impression to what I had on the iMac G5 Sorbet Leopard install in that everything is very snappy obviously in part that's due to the SSD storage I'm running in both of these systems but I reckon the software does go a long way as promised I'm going to launch Geekbench now PC 32-bit that's our only option obviously run benchmark that's See how we go. So that's a pretty interesting result on Geekbench guys. It's marginally better than when I had just the standard Leopard install. 13 more than what it achieved previously on standard Leopard. What's interesting though is that these individual scores are also better. Not by huge amounts. I don't know if it's a fluke, but I am inclined to say that Sorbet Leopard, however the improvements have been made, is a nicer experience than default Leopard. YouTube runs. What the heck? How cool is that? That's my iMac G3 video there. It's not perfect, you gotta give it some time to buffer, and obviously you're gonna need one of the higher end G4s to be able to do this. This machine has the 1.33 gigahertz chip, and it is struggling a lot, 
but you can, if you really want to, watch videos on this thing. And of course, older sites like Macintosh Repository are an absolute pleasure to use. Obviously that's thanks to the G4, but from my own personal experience, web browsing in general has just been a bit better on Sorbet Leopard. So that's that. Thank you for watching me fiddle with Sorbet Leopard on the PowerBook G4. And for once in this PowerBook's life, I'm not sure if you've seen any of my previous videos, but it's fully functional. The keyboard works, the battery works, the charging works and I'm really excited to use it as a normal laptop. So this was just a short video, pretty simple and straightforward. I'd be keen to hear your guys' experiences with Saw by Leopard. Have any of you tried it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. It does help the algorithm to get these videos to as many people as possible, and therefore more discussions and nerdy chat, which is what I'm here for. You can also join the Discord with the link in the description for that if you like. Also consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I really appreciate your recent support as well. There have been quite a few of you coming across and subscribing recently, which is super cool. But that's all for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.